Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining today's conference call with Toronto FC. We are joined today by uh, Toronto FC General Manager Tim Bezbenchenko and Stephen Bidashore. Before I turn the call over to Tim, just a reminder that when we open up to media questions, we kindly ask that you introduce yourself with name and media affiliation prior to your question. Thank you. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Tim Bezbenchenko for his opening remarks. Tim? Thanks, Dave. Uh, first off, good, good afternoon, everyone, and, and Stephen, thanks for joining. Uh, the call. Um, today is an exciting day for Toronto FC and our supporters as we welcome even Beta Short to the club. For those that followed TFC last season, you'll know that our, our team defense and, uh, and our right back position in particular uh, was an area, area we wanted to address this offseason. And, and in our minds, Stephen is one of the top right backs in the league. Uh, Stephen will bring a steady veteran presence, presence to our defense, along with the addition of Drew Moore earlier this week that will allow us to continue our progression as a, as a club. Uh, and a club that's contending for championships. And for anyone who has been around Stephen, you'll hear that he's a very positive influence on the pitch and in the locker room, uh, which is exactly the, type, the kind of player we want on our side. And we're just thrilled he's excited uh, to come to Toronto um, as thrilled as, as we are. Uh, in fact, throughout this process, if anyone knows in terms of the reentry draft, uh, because he was reentry eligible, Stephen uh, had the ability to. Um, uh, in a way, select which club he, he was going to in the fact that he had to approve a trade that was uh, between Vancouver and ourselves. So, again, we're looking for players who, who, who want to be in Toronto and who choose Toronto as their club. And, and, and certainly we've had our eyes set on uh, Stephen for a number of not just uh, months but years. So we're excited to have Stephen uh, with us. Uh, and at this time, I want to turn it over to Stephen um, uh, to, to, for him to give some remarks. Thanks, all. Yeah, thanks, uh, Tim, for uh, for everything that you've done. Obviously, uh, it's, it's going to be an exciting two years. Uh, I'm excited to be part of Toronto FC. Uh, first, I just want to thank the Vancouver Whitecaps organization, uh, the coaching staff, uh, the players, everyone over there uh, for the past two years. It's, it's really been uh, a lot of fun, some great memories. I'm going to miss, miss them uh, and the city. Um, and then especially the fans. So I just want to thank them for everything for the past two years. Um, but, you know, now I'm looking forward to the future and uh, I'm excited. You know, I hear a lot of great things about Toronto and, and the organization uh, from the players and, and great things about the fans. And um, Toronto is doing a lot of good things right now. And, uh, you know, they deserve a winning team. And hopefully I can I can help. Uh, bring that winning to, to the club. So uh, I'm excited for the next two years, and, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Great. Thank you, Stephen, and thank you, Tim. With that, we'll open it up to media questions. Hi, uh, hi Stephen. It's Kurt Larson of the Toronto Sun. Um, just wondering, you know, uh, your, your coach, Carl Robinson in Vancouver, has, has spent a lot of time in Toronto. Did he, um, you know, tell you anything before, uh, before you approved the deal? And, uh, what did he say just about the city and about the organization? Yeah, you know, Carl's uh, a great guy. Um, he 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 fought real hard to keep me in Vancouver. He didn't really mention much uh, about Toronto except, you know, after everything was done that I'll enjoy it over there. Uh, but during the time, he was mostly just uh, talking about Vancouver and how beautiful it was and trying to keep me there. So, uh Nothing, nothing to kind of sell me on Toronto, but he just afterwards said, uh, "I'll enjoy it over there." Stephen, it's uh, Neil Davidson from the Canadian Press. Uh, first of all, welcome to Toronto. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, I know you're looking forward, but can I just ask you to look back a little bit? You were very um, complimentary about Vancouver on your Twitter. Uh, obviously, you enjoyed playing there. Um, mm -hmm. Did you want to leave? Were you surprised when things worked out the way they did? And, and was it strictly a, a business decision, you think? Obviously, they liked you as a player, but did they just feel that the price tag was too much? Uh, you know, I don't know if it was one thing in particular. Uh, obviously, Vancouver is a beautiful city. Anyone that's visited here will, will say the same thing. Uh, it's, uh, it's definitely one of the nicest cities, and I enjoyed my time here. I really did. Uh, but it's just one of those things where a great opportunity came up with Toronto and, uh, you know, all the cards fell into place. And I, I really just I couldn't turn it down. So I'm excited to, to be a part of Toronto FC now and, and really looking forward to bringing a championship to a club that, that's really done a lot to get it but haven't quite got over that final step. So 
I'm hoping that I can uh, help out along with uh, two more. They're, they're signing earlier this week. So uh, I know uh, Tim mentioned defense was uh, an issue last year. So hopefully we can uh, hope, hope solve that problem. Can I just uh, ask another way then? Were you what was your reaction when your option wasn't picked up? Were you surprised? Had you expected it? Uh, you know, actually, I, I spoke with uh, with Greg Anderson and Carl Robinson uh, a little bit earlier before that. Kind of, they were giving me a heads up uh, just because uh, some of the numbers that I hit really were going to hit the cap uh, hard. So we kind of knew that, uh, or I kind of knew that beforehand. Uh, so when it, when it came up and they said that, uh, it wasn't too big of a, a shock because they warned me about it, but, uh, we knew we were going to be kind of talking and trying to sort something out. Um, but at the same time, I think, uh, Vancouver knew that this opened up, uh, the field for, you know, uh, all the MLS clubs, not just Toronto, but, uh, I think in the end, uh, you know, the, the, all, all the pieces fell into place for Toronto, and it was too good of an opportunity to, to turn down. So I, you know, I had to take it. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you here. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Steven, it's Kurt, uh, Kurt Larson here on the Toronto Sun. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you spent some time in San Jose playing with uh, Justin Morrow, right? Yes, spent four years with Justin Morrow in San Jose. Yeah, I mean, how how well do you know him? I mean, do you, do, you, do you refer to him as a good friend? And has he reached out to you? And just how good is it to have that kind of familiarity when you're coming in? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of know him. He was at my wedding, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, good good friends with Justin. Uh, one of the the people that I you know talk to on a regular basis. So uh, he did have a, a part to, in this, and uh, I'm I'm glad that he did talk to. Him or whoever else he talked to to kind of uh, get me over there, but I'm looking forward to it. You know, anytime you go somewhere where you have familiar faces, it's, uh, it's definitely an, a nice little thing. Tim, it's Neil Davidson again. Can I ask you about the second round pick that you gave up? Uh, mm-hmm. I, I only see it's it's marked in the the release as it would be the second highest of your second round picks. I only see you as having one second round pick right now. Uh, am I missing one? Yeah, we acquired one from uh, Philadelphia in the Warren Cabal trade. Um, um, so so it, it becomes a little bit challenging to, to kind of track it all because typically you're trading sort of a highest pick or a lowest pick, and, and the league has to figure out if you're going to uh, uh, which pick, which teams own which pick. So typically, you know, trade these types of second draft picks get encumbered maybe one or two times, uh, uh, and so the league just has to do its work to make sure that they're, they're, the, the teams actually have the, the, the picks to trade. And in this case, we had our Nats, which we had traded away, and then we had, but we had picked up another one um, from, from Philadelphia. But you sent one a second round to Seattle in the Zavaleta trade, right? That is correct. That is correct. But you still had another one? Yes, exactly. Okay, so you're at two right now? Or you were uh, well, until you we, traded. Well, we're at yeah, exactly. Now, now okay. we're, we're we're at zero. Yep. And uh, again, uh, if I can ask you about salary cap, I know you're going to say that we don't have to be salary compliant until March first. <laughs> but uh, this is another uh, that's two fairly sizable contracts you've landed this week. Uh, <laughs> you have to do some uh, some shuffling with the uh, with the roster to to make this compliant. Yeah, I mean, you know, anytime you're in a salary cap world, uh, uh, you have to, you know, it's really just a trade off. Each each time you make a decision, it's going to come at the cost of your salary cap or, or possibly another player. And obviously, we don't have to make decisions until March one. But um, um, you know, there's the salary cap, and there's allocation money. Now there's this targeted allocation money, which you could trade uh, to other teams. Uh, uh, there's there's multiple and creative ways you can you can kind of hit cap. You could trade a player, and then the team holds part of the salary cap, but there's a number of things you can do. So we'll be looking at all those ways under the rules to um, to be salary cap compliant by March 1st. Okay. Thank you. Steven, um, it's Kurt again. Um, Do you still expect to be part of the, uh, I believe you're part of the Iranian uh, national team setup, right? 
Yes. I mean, do you, do you still plan to be uh, in their plans in the future? And just what's that like, you know, traveling to compete in the, um, you know, the Asian Confederation? Yeah, uh, you know, when I mentioned earlier about all the pieces falling into place and uh, too good of an opportunity to turn down, this is one of the things, you know, there's a lot of details that go into making a big decision like this, you know, moving across the country is a, is a big deal, um, you know, especially for someone like me who's been on the West Coast my entire life. Uh, but that was that was also a big factor in it where I'd be closer to the national team. You know, some might say it's not that close, but, you know, you look at a flight that five, six hours, that, that helps shorten up the flight uh, when from the West Coast it takes about 17 hours. So it definitely shortens it up, and uh, I'm hoping that it'll get me a future call-in. Uh, you know, obviously we've had a, a few matches where we've done well, um, and I know a couple, uh, couple camps are coming up in, I believe, March and May. So, you know, I, if, if I get called in, I'll, I'll be excited and help the country out. But, uh, you know, and, until then, I'm just going to do everything I can uh, with Toronto to, to play well and help us win and hopefully good things come from it.